Okay, so in the critique of the Gotha program, Marx states that this labor time accounting approach for organizing distribution is the best way to do it. But he doesn't really say why it's the best way to do it. Our Kleiman in the paper also doesn't address why this way and why not another way. Right. So I think the, the whole question of distribution that Marx is addressing is is related to what kind of distribution system would allow for the socialist mode of production to successfully be able to reproduce, be, be able to carry on its own steam. And, you know, a popular conception of socialism has always been that distribution, right, would be according to needs. And that's essentially what the what the communizers, for one, would argue. They, they look at it from a point of view of rationing the goods, but it's a, a form of income distribution, so we can think of it the same way. You know, it's true in Critique of Gotha that Marx does talk about social transfers for people, for example, who can't work. He says uh, you would need that. And of course, that is a form, a limited form, but still a form of distribution according to needs. So the real question is, why does he come down on the side of labor tokens at the same time as the primary, what he's clearly recommending as the primary mode of distribution for the mode of production when it gets to socialism? So let's consider, uh, you know, why would that be? Well, the first thing is that the, the distribution system cannot be based on labor market style wage levels. That's something that's very core to what Marx is getting at. So from his point of view, that would lead back to identifiable social classes, right? And so the socialist mode of production just won't last in those conditions. Right. So this is mm. like differential wages, your wages being a function of the value of the output within the market, essentially. Exactly. Because labor is treated as a commodity itself. So that's a natural, that's a natural relationship. You know, that's, he talks about this uh, idea of fairness, but he's, he's really kind of talking about what's the kind of natural relationship that comes out of capitalism in terms of distribution. And that's kind of what it is, because it's an economy for making commodities, you know. And so he's arguing that that kind of distribution system just wouldn't be suitable for a non-class society, that it would reproduce a society that's very much like the one that we have now. And if you tried to have a distribution system like that, it would kill the mode of production. That, that's, that's, that we've talked about already, the socialist mode of production as being a communal reproduction. So, so that's one thing. And the second thing is, you know, if the distribution system then isn't linked to value, it, it doesn't mean it can't be linked to other things apart from labor time. It could be like kind of irrational in the sense of not being related to participation in social labor at all. But if that was the case, then the argument to me is, is pretty clear that people wouldn't participate in labor. And that's why he's drawing the distinction with communism of the so-called higher phase, because if productivity was super high, then you could get around that limitation. You could say, well, yeah, we can have a distribution system that isn't based on participation in social labor because participation in social labor is, is trivial to reproduce all of the goods and services that we need. So we can have very easily have a different kind of distribution system where being compensated in terms of your participation in labor is not primary. That's a secondary thing at that point. So if you accept those kind of limitations, the two things I've just sketched out there, then you kind of come around to the point of view, at least I have, I think yourself, Tom, and I think a lot of people would take the same view, that the only thing that's really left is what Marx proposes, which is this kind of flat income labor token system. Combined with, yes, social transfers, which play a non-dominant role. Because again, if their role is dominant, then the labor token system is rendered ineffective because not participating in social labor, doing something else is how you are able to, to, to reproduce yourself in the mode of production. And therefore the mode of production, if it's based on producing things, it, it, it falls. So that's the, I think that's the issue. Right. So in the kind of a, a like an irrational, version, we could say that people are paid based on the number of children they have. Each child, I get an automatic 40 hours a week return from, say, just having the kids. Well, in, in that kind of a scenario, you could say, well, why would I work? Just get the money off my kids until they're 18. I get all this income from them. And then what we have, we have a dynamic in society whereby people will have kids so they don't have to work. So their productivity will go down. These irrational type schemes don't make any sense 
for maintaining the reproduction of the economy itself. So what Marx, what we're talking, what we're seeing when we link it to, to work most dominantly, that would mean that you could imagine in a communist future to alleviate, say, this inequality between one guy having a lot of kids and him working and not getting much money, say, for his own personal development, for his own personal spending, whatever. There could be like a child credit thing where some extra bits of income could be distributed, but not to the extent that that is the dominant type of distribution mechanism within the economy, that the dominant type has to be one that maintains the productivity and the reproduction of the system, which is what is required to get us from lower stage communism to a higher stage communism. Yeah, exactly right. You can imagine as well that it wouldn't just be in a real scenario having a distribution that would be primarily based on one thing. It would be you know, one needs based thing, it would be all kinds of things. So the people who would advocate going straight to distribution based on needs, I think that's the problem that they have, that unless you have reached a level of labor productivity, where participation in labor, uh, linking distribution to participation in labor doesn't really matter anymore, because participation in labor is not a social priority. We don't need, you know, we only need to work for a couple of hours a week, or even less than that. Unless you're in that situation, I think they have a big problem because clearly I think we're not, we're not at that stage. We're at a stage where participation in social labor would be very important and we would need the primary distribution mechanism to be through participation in social labor. So far in uh, when we've been doing the fundamental principles, uh, reading group series and a lot of the stuff, how my thoughts have developed on it, one of the most important things for me, was the way that the labor time accounting has a direct one-to-one relationship between what the work is done and what the consumption is, that there's no place in between for this exploiting class to wedge in and siphon off value. So here we see that it's it's at least important that the productivity element that we've just discussed, so that we maintain the productivity in the economy such that we can get to a higher stage, such that the society can reproduce itself at a higher level, that the two of them combined make the labor time accounting form for distribution of lower stage communism. It makes it a logical necessity. Yeah, I think that's right. I think it's it's actually quite hard to get around that point. I think there's a very, very strong argument towards it being a logical necessity. The other problem with distribution based purely on needs, and again, People who talk about that, they really have to do it through rationing because they would be aware that there is not a kind of uh, great abundance in all kinds of goods that we have at the moment. So when they talk about rationing, the, the next question that naturally comes up is, well, you know, rationing on what on what basis? You know, what is your measure of needs? And that gets into a whole very uh, thorny set of issues that I don't think anyone has managed to resolve. And I don't think anyone will manage to resolve because I don't think there is an answer to that question. 